episode of Dolce Vita. Enjoy a delicious feast at the Michelin starred restaurant. Explore the latest technology that helps you blue like a barista. Check with Samuel Chan and share his passion for collecting vintage watches. And enjoy art in a relaxing setting. I like the simple things in life, and that includes what I eat. But that's not to say that I like my food plain. I just think that minimal seasoning is enough to bring out the original taste of the ingredients, and that's what I need. While simple dishes are comforting, I also appreciate the finer side of gastronomy, when what we eat is essentially the chef's work of art. It's not just the enjoyment of our taste buds, but all five of our senses. Uh, not everybody goes to a restaurant with the same uh, intention, with the same purpose. Uh, people might just meet for a business talk, or it can be family gathering, some sort of a celebration. I believe it's our our duty and uh, at the same time our pleasure and our aim in order to make the thing comfortable regardless the reason let's say or why they come with us book has been probably was born in order to use all those parts let's say less premium less and less uh, important of the beef uh, but eventually the burger itself can be also like a very fancy item and could be also let's say, represent a, a very high level of preparation. So of course it depends on the ingredients you use at first and all the surrounding that comes with that. Uh, we normally experience that many of our guests and friends really go crazy, especially for a lunch proposal with the burger itself. Otherwise we can turn it, let's say, a bit more fancy uh, when it comes to the mini size of those. Beef tartar is always like very, very appealing and uh, very direct dishes, I would say, and super simple to make, I mean, even at home. The beef itself can be versatile in its usage. Even though many people tend to be apprehensive about tartar, the dish continues to soar in popularity. Tall with caviar, this tartar is definitely worth a try. Carpaccio is another classic beef dish. This time, the chef added a new twist to the paper-thin raw beef by sprinkling pistachio nuts and parmesan cheese over the meat, making every bite taste better. Tuna tartar is a relatively common dish that I come across, but here the chef mixes tuna, veal and oyster all together, creating a burst of unique flavors. Along with the caviar on top, Mmm, so yummy! Personally, I prefer the Black Angus filet carpaccio because it's such a flavorful yet elegant starter. And the meat is sliced so thinly, you can see the chef's excellent knife cutting skills. The top also has pistachios, which is a surprising yet welcome addition. Are you having a hankering for a delicious steak? Get your knife ready for this Korean beef strip loin. Served in a hot cast iron plate, the sizzling steak is just mouth-watering. As the saying goes, no steak meal is complete without a yummy side dish. And this homemade caramel tea cheese potato cream not only is a treat on its own right, but it's also perfect as a side to a savory steak. Fancy something other than red meat? Then you need to try out this red prawn risotto. This risotto is anything but ordinary. As the chef cooked it with roasted green tea, the refreshing tea flavor cut through the heaviness of the risotto, creating a perfect texture and taste. Korean shorthorn beef, put simply, is a rare cut of beef. Rich in flavor itself, all it needs is a little bit of seasoning, and it's already so delicious. Paired with Comte cheese homemade potato cream, this is the chef's special. The potato is light and fluffy, along with a Comte cheesy crust, I love it. Now, on any Italian fine dining menu, you'll always see risotto as a common dish. However, as per the norm here, there's an unexpected ingredient. Along with red prawn, there's also the infusion of roasted green tea, which was a delight for all my senses. Tiramisu is one of the most loved desserts. The tiramisu here looked nothing like the ones we usually have. Underneath the crispy chocolate surface, there are layers of Vavati mascarpone cheese and chocolate beets, 
is the taste of heaven in every bite. Whether you prefer simple cooking techniques that allows the taste of fresh ingredients shines, or extravagant dish presentations that make you say wow, one thing that we all adore is the creativity of the chef. What can you do in a minute or less? We're engaged in this innovative coffee experience. Well, firstly, I think with, we have a very unique design with just this uh, swan neck that is exposed and it really keeps the uh, installation timeless. I mean, we have uh, done some very beautiful installations in workspaces, hospitality, retail, and also a few residential uh, it's like locations. like minimalistic, right? Very much so. And then, of course, there's the technology and we keep rolling out uh, enhancements that are quite regular. Um, all of our machines are actually cloud-based, so you have full tracking on how many cups are brewed, as well as any technical readings. And of course, on top of that, we also come up with some special features. For example, we'll be rolling out our first uh, native API integration for online payments. So that really takes our equipment to a completely different dimension, still retaining its kind of lifestyle image. Mm. And lastly, of course, when it comes to beans, in addition to our standard selection, we do come out with a few special blends just to give people an opportunity to try something different as part of our, you know, support towards this growing coffee culture. The whole thing sounds extremely high tech. It is indeed. Definitely and, a uh, unique experience. We're very, very happy with what we have and what we are showing to the market today. Thank you. Thank you. Today's experience is very unique indeed. The idea I love the most is that apart from using your tablet, you can also use your smartphone. This means that when I wake up, I can just make a coffee by pressing a few buttons on my smartphone, and when I get up on my feet, the coffee is ready. After the break, take a look at Samuel Chan's precious watch collection and master the perfect fluid art technique. has their own hobbies or activities that make them truly alive. A lot of people have their passion for collecting. It can be collecting stamps, antiques, or coins. Like the friend I'm visiting today, you may know he's already a successful young entrepreneur, but he's also an avid watch collector. Let's check with him today. And uh, the conversations we have when we, when we acquire one, but um, it always begin as a passion. And then eventually, I realized they're also an amazing investment. And how do you elevate your watch purchases? Like, are you guided by your emotion or like, you know, numbers or like what? Am I guided by emotions? Definitely. Yeah, it's uh... excitement. Well, yeah, to begin with, of course. So when I bought the first one or two, I, I obviously had zero idea. I just thought it was a, uh, it looked as if it's a fake watch because it looks like identical to what they produce today, just slightly different. For example, the case is plastic instead of sapphire. I bought my first few because of interest, but it's a bit like entrepreneurship, I think, like running a business. I always begin with a passion, and then as you start to know more, research more, make the right decisions, you realise profits making is a possibility. I know you have recently ordered a customised watch. Can you share with us more about it? I can tell you exactly why I ordered that particular model. It's, it, it does have a, a, a good reason, meaning. meaning. Um, James Bond passed away in 2020. Um, so we decided to um, order a watch that was featured in the very first Bond film. And there's this message, shaken, not stirred. It's quite well known line uh, in the movie. I think it has a metaphorical meaning too. So in 2020, obviously, our business were hit very hard, but keeping calm. Uh, so I think that was a great message. Yeah. Uh, so the, the watch is dedicated for the year 2020. Mm. Which one is your favourite watch? They're all very lovable, but uh, my personal favourite would be this, um, with a tropical dial, we call it. So these little sub-dials have turned brown throughout the years. So it wasn't originally brown. Um, they were made with a particular paint and they say because of sunlight or um, somehow water molecules have gone in, they've turned brown. But they're very rare because 
it's uh, actually a faulty watch. So uh, some people may have replaced it for the years, or, um, or that it, may, it could have been uh, further damaged. So it could be uh, um, it turned grey or black or something. So it's, I think it's quite a rare piece. And if someone wants to like start starting to collecting watches, and how do you like, what is your advice? My advice would be vintage watches is, is becoming and have been very fashionable and trendy. Hence, there are many stores and people selling these watches, but you need to be very careful and do your research because with these collectibles, they are from the different years. And hence, I did make a lot of mistakes along the way. I think the biggest mistake is there are lots of Frankenstein watches, as, as we say. Um, so, uh, for example, a watch that is from the 1960s perhaps have parts that are from the 1980s or, or beyond. Um, they so throughout the years they may, may, maybe have um, replaced the basil or the or the dial. So um, you need to be you need to be very careful. Some people collect timepieces for investment, but for me, a watch is all about my feeling or my state of mind. I wear what I feel matches my mood or the occasion. People value things in different ways. Find out what works for you and go for it. I love art. I think it's beautiful and can mean something different to everyone. But when it comes to doing it myself, it's a little bit different. I think my skills vary from what I think is pretty passable to absolutely mediocre. But I think the most important thing is releasing your creativity and trying new things and having fun. So over the last year, the pandemic has been hitting the world very badly and I think the negativity has been building in the society. We just want to do something relaxing and stress relieving for the public, for them to have a taste about it. And through art is a way of, is a very therapeutic way of art making. Not only is the art very gorgeous, but also the way of making it is very extremely pleasant. For those who think they have no art sense, um, we want to share that um, art has no particular skills. Um, it's not always about drawing lines and shapes. Um, fluid art allows the colors to do the work for you. So um, you don't need to worry about, you don't know how to do the drawing. Fluid art doesn't always need to um, work on canvas, it has no boundary. Um, you can do the water modeling art on water. Uh, when you see the color flows on top of the water, it gives a very um, relaxed sense and you can relax your feeling and see the reflection of the inner self. Compared to other arts and painting, fluid art and water modeling art is much more. There are endless possibilities in it and People can really uh, enjoy themselves and like by combining different colors, paints and letting them to spill over the canvas, it is very relaxing, which is very suitable for the people in the current society. Um, in addition, it is also suitable for all ages and different art levels. And also, other than making it as a decoration, uh, it can also be something daily useful stuff like notebooks and clocks. In art therapy, color is often associated with a person's emotions, and fluid art is a fine and creative way to express yourself. Just follow your intuition. Everyone has their unique way to express themselves. In fluid art, we don't have a specific shapes or form. Um, it allows the colors to do it. So um, you can really relax yourself and let go and enjoy the art. If the people are struggling about the color, we always give suggestions to them. But it really depends on how the person think about the color. So, um, for example, some people think blue is sadness, but some people think blue is calmness. So it really depends on the person's perspective. I believe um, everyone has the ability to create. Um, everyone can have the ability to do art. 
But you know, in these busy days, everyone is busy about work, about school, so they might don't have the time to um, try on a new thing and try on a new skills. So um, during the process of creating fluid art, it can give you a chance to challenge yourself to try a new thing. Now you've seen me host a variety of different art subjects on Dolce Vita. I think it's safe to say that I'm no Vincent Van Gogh, but that's the beauty of it. There's no rules when it comes to releasing your creativity. And at the end of the day, beauty is in the eye of its beholder. That's all the time we have for this week's episode. If you want to find out more about what we have introduced, remember to log on to our website. Want to know how to live life to the fullest? Let us give you some clues. Just sit back and indulge in the sweet life with us. In the coming weeks, take pleasure in the gourmet food from around the world. Explore fun and effective ways to stay healthy, look gorgeous. Keep up with the latest trend in every aspect of life and connect with inspiring people from different backgrounds. Be sure to tune in again next time.